Want to win $50 Takashimaya vouchers when you learn from our free investing and trading webinars? You can simply register for our webinars, log in to the attendee hub, go to community and click join game. Stay engaged and see how you rank on the live leaderboard. Answer polls, ask questions, submit feedback and more. Only 100 winners with the highest scores will win each month. What are you waiting for? Click Join Game Now. Terms and conditions apply. Think you're driven enough to succeed? Win a brand new Tesla Model 3 in just three easy steps. Open a CGS CIMB trading account and start trading your way to awesome prizes. Participants can trade any of our six products to earn tickets. The more you trade, the better your chances. Earn as many tickets as possible from July to December to win the latest and greatest from Apple and be eligible for our grand prize, a Tesla Model 3. What's more, we've also lined up a series of webinars throughout the campaign period to help you become a savvier investor. Don't miss out on these free sessions. Register and level up your trading play. Open a CGS CIMB account and start trading today. Hi. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for taking the time to join our CGS Driven to Learn seminar. Uh, my name is Ethan, and I'm from the fixed income team uh, of CGS IMB. Um, together with Sean from the CFD team, um, today we'll go through um, a few topics today with regards to fixed income trading. Uh, what is fixed income um, and some examples of fixed income against equity. What are the differences and what are the benefits of trading uh, bonds? Um, later, I will hand over the mic over to Sean where he'll discuss the benefits of CFD trading. And as well as our Driven to Learn campaign, uh, what's in it for our clients who um, trade with us for this promotional period. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so these are the points that we're going through today. Introduction to fixed income or bonds. Okay, the advantages and opportunities for fixed income. Um, the leverage return. Um, what are the differences if you use it by CFD? And then later, um, the benefits of taking leverage on bonds. Okay, just some disclaimer um, 
for our presentation. It is solely just for educational purposes. Um, illustrations presented in this presentation, it is um, not meant to be taken as a recommendation for buy or sell. Okay, so what is fixed income? A fixed income, or commonly known as bonds, right, is an instrument where either corporates or governments they issue in order to raise capital. Uh, it is another way of uh, entity to raise funds apart from issuing uh, equities or shares. Okay, in the fixed income market, right, it is even larger than the equity market. So it's estimated that in today, it is worth about 119 trillion as compared to the equity market, which is only about 85 trillion. So as you can see that the debt market is relatively larger than the equity market. Um, we all know that uh, interest rates and debt is a huge component in today's financial markets and the economy. So interest rates drive a lot of things from your mortgage loan from your deposit rate, and as well as um, what kind of uh, financing that you're able to get in today's market. So that is why fixed income as a bond product is, 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 is a very important uh, asset class in the financial market today. So what's the difference between debt and equities? So in fixed income, when a company issues the debt or the bond, it is uh, meant to it is a way of borrowing money from investors and in return, investors will get a fixed coupon per year that the company pays. So it is essentially the company borrowing or the government borrowing money from investors and paying you a fixed return per year, like a fixed deed where you deposit your cash in the bank. In fixed income investment, right, it is seen as a more conservative approach when it comes to investing, because um, regardless of the company's performance, they have to pay you the coupon, even though they are making a loss, as long as the cash flow allows it to pay. So if in the event that a company does not pay you the coupon, it is deemed as a default and there are covenants that will kick in and in the end, um, Legal, legal, and 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 uh, clawback will, 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 will kick in depending on the covenant of the bond. So, it is the obligation for the company to pay you uh, the coupon, unlike equity. So during the COVID period, we can see that um, there were many companies that um, they didn't pay out the dividends, or in fact they. Uh, restricted dividend payments from 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 um during the crisis because they have to preserve their cash flow and it was um the company did not um perform a lot of companies did not perform very well last year they make losses and then that's why they withhold their dividends so dividends when it comes to stock it is not guaranteed or it is not predictable. If the company does not do well, they may be able to scrap their dividend payments altogether. So this is one of the advantages of, of fixed income. As we can see from the PowerPoint slide that it is ranked above your stocks. And that is why when it comes to the cash flow payments, the company will have to pay the debt coupon payment first before giving the stock the dividend payments. So the advantages of fixed income, the bond prices are less volatile. Um, later, I'll show you an example um, during the crisis, right? Um, how the bond has performed as compared to its equity component. It is a much stable and predict predictable uh, stream of income. Um, I'm 
I'm very sure that a lot of Singaporeans would, would, would they, they love uh, dividend investing or, or, or income uh, dividend strategies. So when it comes to bonds, you will know that as long as the company doesn't default, you are able to get that amount of coupon or cash flow per year. And it is a good, um, it is a way of diversifying a portfolio also. So um, when you have bonds and make sure of bonds and equity in your portfolio, right, you can reduce the volatility in the portfolio because the prices do not move as much as stocks. Okay, um, so for the next slide, I would use an example um, that illustrates uh, the defensive properties of fixed income. So in this example, I'm using um, SPH, 4% uh, perk bond. Um, I think most of us are aware of um, what SPH is. Uh, it is Singapore Press Holding. Um, it's a listed company um, that it was in the SDI index then before before it was yeah um, kicked out of SDI. So we will take the reference date from 6 November 2019 until 13 July 2021 in comparison. Um, this period will capture um, the pre-COVID crisis, during the crisis, and as well as now at the end crisis, post-crisis, how did the bond fare? So as we can see from uh, the price chart, pre-COVID, it was trading around par or near par. And during the sell down in March and April, when um, the crisis hit, right, it went as low as 92. Um, so in, 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 bond, in bond prices, um, we, we were price bond in percentages. Um, so when the company issues the debt is normally priced at par and at the principal or, or during the maturity of the bond, uh, the company will return you the principal, which is at 100%, as well as the, the coupon payments. So we can see that after the crisis, uh, it has more or less um, corrected or retraced back to its uh, pre-COVID prices. Why is this so? Because we, as we know that a bond is an obligation from the company. So even though SPH uh, performance for this whole period is not good or the profit or revenue has been declining, but so long as there is cash flow generated by the company, they have to redeem the bond um, when it comes to the maturity date. So that's why the bond price will go back to par eventually at maturity date. So at the next slide, I will use the same Singapore press holding, but for equity performance. So we can see like, it's, 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 it's no brainer here that from November 19 all the way 13 July, right? The price of the stock has never recovered back to its pre COVID levels. So this example, of course, there are other examples in the market. Uh, this is just one of them to showcase that um, the defensive nature of bonds and how it is a good addition to a portfolio when it comes to diversification and when um, really a market crisis happens, you can see that um, you do not lose as much as as much money as you were for for the equity portion. Okay, so in this, the next slide, I would like to go through the performance for the bond and the equity using the same period. 
So in the first column, we will see that it is um, a fully paid position on the SPH 4% perpetual bond. We do not take leverage on the first column and the, our principal is 250,000. Okay, so in the bond market for the corporate bond space, uh, for sing dollar bonds, generally they are in sizes of 250k. Um, so if you will want to, if you want to buy a bond, the minimum for a fully paid position will be 250k. And during this period, you have received a coupon of 16,000, 16, that's called 16.6k. Okay, so there's no financing rate because you have fully paid the bond. Um, your return for income is 16.6. .6, and you can see that you suffered a slight price loss of $500. But at the end of our observation period, there is still a net gain of your investment because of your coupon. So your coupon offset your slight price loss but you're but you're still able to have a, a, a yield a return during this period. So for the second column, where we talk about using CFDs in order to trade bonds, um, for SPH four percent perpetual, you are able to give five times leverage. So the margins required for for this bond is twenty percent, and the capital outlay is fifty thousand for a position exposure of 250K. So the coupon that we receive is also the same, 16.6K, because your underlying has the total volume of 250K. The notional is the same. Uh, but now, because of leverage, you will be charged, you have been charged a financing rate of 2.06 indicatively. And your net income after financing fee is 7.9K. So your income return, it is at 9.4. And your capital gain, it is still minus or down $500 because of the same notional. So at the end, you can see that your total return has been magnified due to the leverage because it is based on your um, initial capital that you have initiated or you have bought this bond. So you use one fifth of the capital as compared to a fully paid position and your total return has been amplified. And in the third column, we will go through the common stock, uh, which is um, SPH, the thicker SPH. Now. So for, for, for for fair comparison purposes, we will also use the same notional, um, 250,000. Okay, in this period, you have dividends. So they pay dividends of 6,000 based on 250K notional. Okay, there's no financing rate. Your net income is 6,000. Okay, and this is your income return based on your capital. But we can see that during this period, your price loss is 55,000. You are down 55,000. Because um, in my previous slide, um, from our observation period, the stock price has dropped from 2.7 to 1.7. So this will be your total loss. And at the end of the day, your total return is negative 11.6%. So this is the performance of the stock from November 2019 to July 2020. Okay, and in the final column, we will go through the SPA stock if you use CFD. So in our CFD platform, the same thing, we do give five times leverage on SPA stock. And your capital outlay is also 50,000. Uh, dividend is still the same, but now your financing rate is slightly higher as of around 4% because um, this is the stock. And for your net income, you will be down 
uh, 10 grand uh, because your dividend does not cover your financing cost. That's in terms of cash flow. And your capital loss is still the same, F55K because of the same notional. And in this instance, you are down 78K. Sorry, 78%. Um, so in this example, we can see that um, when you have an uh, outperformance of uh, bonds, and if you do take leverage, right, um, you outperform uh, the equity, the equivalent equity of um, the bond and the stock itself. Lah. And if you do take the stock leverage position during this period, you can see that um, yeah, yeah, your losses can be of a substantial um, value. So the point of this illustration is to let people know that um, it, 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 in bond investments, it is uh, not as scary as, as, as some people would imagine. Um, why is this so? It's because um, when we read the news, we only see um, adverse or negative news when it comes to fixed income. Because if the bond doesn't default or if there isn't any issue with the bond or the corporate bond. Um, there won't be any news at all because it is expected of the company to pay the coupons and to redeem the principal and maturity or accord it. So when it comes to fixed income, if there's no news, it's good news. A lot of people have um, a very negative slide on bonds is because only when there's a default, then it appears on the news. So for example, like um, Swiger or High Flux because of the bond default. And that is why it appeared on the news and people are deemed, um, or some investors are, are very afraid to, to, to invest in bonds. But if we turn it over to the other flip side, um, there are many bonds out there right, that are um, has not been default or the company did not default. So that's why it's not in the news because the performance is relatively stable and it's nothing outstanding as compared to certain stocks like your meme stocks that will be um, have 50, 100% return in a short period of time. So um, that is why that um, for fixed income investments, um, the, the news coverage will not be as much as certain stocks. Okay, so we will go on to next slide. Okay. Okay, so these are the some uh some examples that um I we have in 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 um the fixed income market in the sing dollar space. So, uh, 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 um, we can see that there is um, a lot of issuers in the market that is um, not uh, exposed or not many investors know that these companies right, have bonds that people can invest or buy. So there's capital infrastructure, um, there's SunTech, there's SPH, there's Stanchart, there's Olam and Singapore Tech Telemedia. So, Singapore Tech Telemedia, it is uh, a, a company that is 100% owned by Thermastic that invests in telecom uh, projects or telecom companies like Starhub. They have, Starhub is one of them uh, uh, in their portfolio. So um, a lot of investors do not know that the equity that they are buying into right, actually have bonds that they can also buy in order to have that same credit risk, but a different return profile or different return from the same company. So we can see that the leverage yield for perpetuals can be quite exciting um, because of 
the leverage that we give um, in under CGSCIB. So if people who are considering gearing up to, to, to leverage on bonds and to get a return that is comparable with their equivalent reads of stocks, right? Um, yeah, please feel free to do so. Okay, so uh, I will compare these uh, CFD bonds and using cash bonds. What are the differences and what are the benefits of using CFD bonds? So the first thing is the obvious reason. Uh, it's a lower initial capital. With, um, as with my previous um, example or slide, if you do a fully paid bond, you'll need to come up with a 250K capital. But if you do a, a CFD bond with five times leverage, your collateral required is only 50,000. Okay, there's no custody fee because um, CFD bonds, we, um, you do not re actually hold the underlying. So there's no custody fee on your contract or your position. Um, again, there's no corporate activity um, on your dividends or your coupon payments. So there's no FX conversion. In CFD, our accounts do not do actual conversion. So whatever buy sell that you have, let's say you 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 do a, a US dollar bond, when you do a buy sell, um, the entries in your account will be remain in USD unless until you instruct a uh, conversion into Sing dollar and you do a withdrawal or deposit. Okay, our commission on bonds for CFD bonds is transparent. Um, if some of you have traded bonds before, you know that um, in the private bank, um, they will quote you an all-in price. So this will be a bit opaque because you will not know, you do not know what they charge you in terms of commission. But for our platform, it's clear cut that we will charge a flat commission fee and you're able to see in your statement. And the last thing that I want to highlight is um, fractionals. So under CFD, we are able to do fractional bonds on certain names or selected names under the sing dollar space. Um, what this means is that, um, as you all know, the corporate bonds notional is in 250k sizes, and it may be huge for certain people, or the sum, the the the, the yeah, the size is too great. So what we did was that we can carve it out such that a client will be able to buy a lower quantity or lower notional exposure for bonds. So if you would like to buy a 50K in SDH uh, or capital, yeah, you are absolutely able to do so under our CFD. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, I have a few questions maybe I'll answer here. Okay, maybe I'll answer at the end. Okay, so um, I'll head over to Mike now to Sean, who will discuss on the benefits of CFD and how you can use CFD to trade as uh, to leverage your gains as a product. Right. Uh, thanks, Ethan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sean. I'm from the CGS CIMB Security CFD team. Um, so early on, you guys heard about um, bonds from Ethan, and uh, he also shared with you guys about a bit of insight on CFD bonds where you're able to do fractional bonds. Um, whereas for my side, um, I'm we are from the C I'm from the CFD product itself, and today I'll be sharing with you guys how CFD might be benefit your investment needs. All right. So by definition, a CFD is an agreement between two parties to exchange difference between the opening price and closing price of contract, and the difference is then settled in cash. All right. And this will allow traders to take the uh, take advantage of the assets price price movement without physical ownership. So what does this mean? It means that you are able, you're entitled to all corporate actions, just that you have no voting rights, okay? 
So uh, Ethan, if you don't mind, next. So with our CFD platform, we offer, Ethan, next please. We offer equities in cash index, next, commodities such as your silver and oil, and we also offer FX and futures and, and CFD bonds. All right, next slide, please. Next. So um, I think many of you guys are familiar with your cash trading account where the amount of cash you have on hand will only allow you to purchase a fixed number of shares. But with CFD, right, you're able to leverage your capital, which means you're able with a low, less, a lower capital outlay, you're able to purchase more shares. So for example, let's say you want to buy uh, DBS shares and let's say uh, it's margin at 10%, with 10,000 cash on hand, you're able to purchase 100,000 worth of DBS shares. And with our platform, it's very easy to, to go long or short. So let's take the example where you think the bank stocks are actually uh, overvalued. You're able to use our platform to short, just, you just need to check whether it's available to short or not. Unlike a typical traditional cash account, you need to open a SB account, SBL account first before you're able to short. And this requires a lot of paperwork and there are multiple conditions you need to fulfill before you're able to short with your cash trading account. All right, next. With our platform, you're able to diversify into other products like I mentioned earlier on, like uh, FX, futures, and then uh, cash index as well. And as well as bonds, let's not forget about bonds. So to know more about each individual product, right, you can head over to our website. Later on, I will show you guys uh, uh, our URL. From there, you can learn more of our, about each of our individual products, all right? So with one platform, you're able to, to access multiple different asset classes. And from there, you can also diversify your cap capital as well, right? Our platform is... Uh, rather easy, to, uh, simple to use. Uh, so if you're interested to learn, um, if you're unsure of our platforms, uh, you can feel free to contact us after this session. We are, uh, and we will contact you and we are more than happy to guide you on how to use our platform as well. Okay. And um, with our platform, you're able to hedge your positions as well. Let's say you have cash position and you know, they're all long you're able to hedge your positions using our cash index, let's say in, in terms of, uh, in, a, in terms of, uh, let's say the market is not, it's very bearish and you have long equities position, you're able to use our CFD cash index in the way to hedge your risks, all right? Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. So what is the key, the, uh, the, the key difference between CGS, CIMB, CFD compared to our competitors? Uh, our CFD is DMA. And what does DMA mean? Uh, DMA mean? It's basically, it's direct market access. Basically, you, we hatch your exact position in the market and you're able to check via using a market debt. And you can also see that your orders are, are matching. Thus, we are fully transparent compared, compared to, to our certain competitors. Okay, so our let's say if you are to uh, you're using our platform to trade CFD, when you submit an order, your order is submitted to the exchange directly, and then it will reflect into our trading system. Whereas competitors who are market makers, when you submit an order, the order routes to them and back to you. So you are not the price. Uh, maker and taker, taker and makers, all right? And with our platform, you're able to participate in pre-opening and pre-closing phases. And we do not do any auto conversions to your funds. So an example, let's say if you open a US position and you have funded in Sing dollars, we do not take a Sing dollars and convert it to USD before you open a USD position. We'll just take the equivalent amount in Sing dollars to open your US position. And when you close off your open position, your PNL will remain in the respective currency, which is USD in this example. So to actually 
know to see your different cash uh, currency cash to see a different currency cash balance in your your account you can look at your daily statement okay there will be a currency ledger for you to refer to all right next please so this is a quick overview of the difference between a dma and market maker so like I said earlier on, your liquid, our liquidity is identical to the exchange, unlike the market makers. Our price is transparent. Uh, our pricing is fully transparent. And we do not take any potential profits from your losses, all right? Unlike certain market makers out there in the market. All right. Next, please. So uh, right here, I have a trading example be compa comparing a traditional cash trading account and with a CFD account. So as you can see here on the left, um, with $100,000 on hand for $10 shares, I can only buy up to 10,000 shares. Okay. And uh, for the cash trading side, the commission is 0.275% exclusive, excluding market charges. So that's why there's an additional $40 down there. And, if we, and let's say that you take profit, you want to take a profit of $1. When you sell, you only make a profit of $9,338. So your return on investment is only 9.34%. Whereas compared to CFD, um, with $100,000 on hand, you're able, and, and the counter is margin at 10%, you're able to purchase up to 100,000 shares with a contract value of 1 million. And uh, currently for Singapore market, we're running actually running a promotion later. I'll be sharing you guys uh, our current Singapore commission rate. But in this example, it's 0.25%. Uh, this is also inclusive of market char charges, unlike the cash account where there's an additional $40. So you're able to trade a bigger position of $1 million and we're going to take profit after you move $1, right, um, your return on investment is 94% compared to the traditional cash account. But take note with CFD, right, um, there is financing involved. So um, as you can see here, now there's a, let's say in this example, we are holding for five days. You take 3.75% plus uh, one month cyber. And in this example, it's 5%. Your financing cost for five days is $685, all right? So uh, next slide, please. Ethan? So take note, uh, leverage X like a, can be a double-edged sword, uh, meaning if it's in your favor, you might actually, you know, uh, benefit from it, meaning you might magnify your profits, but as well, you can magnify, you can also magnify your losses as well. So take note of the risk, all right? Okay, so as earlier I was sharing with you guys about our current promotion, where we have actually uh, lowered our Singapore commission rate to 0.07%. Um, take note that this 0.07% is also inclusive of market charges, okay? It's one of the lowest in the market. And, um, it's only, it's only running until to the month, end month of 31st October. So don't miss this opportunity. If you are, have an account with us uh, and you're not sure on how to fund, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me after the end of the session or you can put it down in the Q&A. I will guide you, guide, I'll guide you on how to fund your account. Okay. So aside from our Singapore commission rates, uh, we also have Hong Kong commission at 0.30% and then US uh, commission rate as well. But to find out more of our commission rates, you can head out to this link at cfd.cgs.cmb.com.sg. Down there, you're able to find more information about our CFD product, right? So down below, um, there is overnight financing. And you only occur financing costs if you are to hold your position overnight. But if you're to do an intraday, intraday trade, uh, you do not incur any financing. So if you're long, it's 3.75% plus base rate. And if you're short, it's 3.75% minus base rate. Okay, so the base rate, it depends on the different exchanges that you're going to trade. Okay, next please.
So earlier on, I was talking about our Singapore, uh, our, our current promotion, which is where we lower our Singapore commission rate to 0.07%. So don't miss out. So there's our contact details and our email address. If you need any support or, on uh, see our CFT product, feel free to contact us at 6210882 or you can email us. I am Sean and uh, feel free to reach out to me. And for clients who are interested in opening an account, right, scan here and we are able to, you're able to open an account. And if you're having difficulties opening an account, feel free to reach out to me, okay? So now I'll be handing over uh, to Karen, uh, who is actually the, who is actually running the Driven promotion. So she's gonna share with you guys a, a bit more of our Driven promotion. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks Sean, thanks for the introduction. Hi everyone, I'm Karen from CJCI MB Marketing. And uh, right now we have a very exciting campaign that's going on, it's the Driven campaign. So um, you see this, are you driven enough to claim what's yours? It's a Tesla Model 3. Okay, so uh, what you actually get to do is you stand a chance to win a Tesla Model 3 and monthly Apple products, such as your iPad Air, your uh, MacBook Air, you know, your iPhone 12, you know, if you need all this, you can come and trade and invest with us. Um, here is the QR code. It will lead you to Driven. So I'm going to uh, hold this screen for a while while, while you scan to register. It will lead you to our Driven website. And um, if you're on your mobile and you're unable to scan this, you can just go to driven.cgs. CG, CGS, sorry, <laughs> dash uh, CIMB.com. So that's uh, driven.cgs dash CIMB.com. Right. Okay, uh, can we move to the next slide? All right, um, you also can follow our social media for more updates. Uh, we have um, a lot more webinars coming up till the end of December. So you can stay tuned. Uh, similarly, I'm also going to hold this screen for a while while uh, people start to scan the QR code. Uh, this will lead to Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you're interested in our Twitter and YouTube, um, that will be on the next slide. So hang on. Okay, next please. Okay, for people who are interested in our Twitter and um, YouTube, please uh, feel free to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our respective pages. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, if you want to win more vouchers, we have, uh, we are giving out Takashimaya vouchers for those people who are on our Driven to Learn website. You should know that by watching, by asking questions and all that, you'll be able to stand a chance to win a $50 Takashimaya voucher. And the best thing about it is that it doesn't expire. So uh, feel free to scan this and register for the next webinar. Similarly, I'm going to hold this uh, for a few seconds or you take out your phones to scan. All right, um, we have some time right now. So um, the speakers, uh, Sean, Ethan, we have a few questions. Uh, would you like to address them? Hi. Thank you, Karen. 
Um, okay, I see a few questions um, streaming in. Um, perhaps I would touch on the fixed income question uh, because um, that's my specialty. Okay, so the question goes is that for investment grade bonds, um, what is the default rate and default coupon payment? Okay, how is this compared to corporate bonds? Uh, okay, so maybe I I I I answer the first part first. Um, what is the default rate? Okay, so we there's no there's no there's no a uh, figure that you can extract from anywhere else to find out what is the the default rate for the entire six dollar corporate market. Um, but what we can see that um the default rate over the past years has been relatively low. Um, because only one or two corporates um, have appeared in the news due to a default or due to a restructuring of their bond um, that um, they have no choice and they're unable to pay back the bondholders in terms of the coupon and the principal amount. Um, the latest definitely high flux. Um, and during the oil and gas crisis, the crash, you have um, Ezeon, um, Pacific International Line, um, but in fact, I think those they went through restructuring and has not defaulted yet. Um, so what happened was that they um, had an agreement with the bondholders um, to reduce their interest payment or the coupon, coupon payments for the bonds. Um, and in doing so, it allows the, 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 the company to have more cash flow and to able to sustain their operations um, for, for, for a longer period of time. Lah. So. Um, that was uh, the fringe cases or the extreme scenarios that we see. Um, but even then, even then, during COVID crisis, when um, hospitality um, names were hit the most, we can see that um, hotel names like um, Hotel Properties, HPL, um, Escort, and in fact, um, FH uh, Hospitality Trust also. So these bonds, um, they in fact, has not uh, defaulted yet. They have been traded down. Um, the price action for these bonds is not uh, favorable, but so far they are still able to maintain the coupon payment because they still have cash flow to be able to meet the obligations of these uh, bonds. So um, we can see that um, for companies that have been hit, uh, quite badly uh, in, in this, this period of time. Uh, so far, there's, there's no default cases yet. So uh, we can say that, yes, the default rate is relatively low for the sing dollar space. As for the default coupon payment, I'm guessing um, the client is asking what is the range of coupon payments that I expect. I, I assume this is the question. Uh, so um, it depends on the company itself. So when it comes to different corporates, they have different um, credit risks or different risks that uh, per the investors perceive to see to, to, to be. So for example, when you compare Singtel against uh, MM2 Asia, for example, of course, we will say that Singtel as the company itself is more stable and is of a stronger status as compared to MM2 Asia. So when it comes down to that, when Singtel do issue bonds, they definitely will be able to pay a lower interest or be able to raise debt, uh, raise capital at a lower cost as compared to MM2 Asia. Because when MM2 Asia issues the bond, they will need to attract investors and in order to reward or it, to attract investors to take up their bonds for a certain amount of risk. So it's all about risk reward when it comes to the bonds um, and who who is the underlying debt or who is the company that's issuing um, these bonds. So yeah, we got to match up the credit risk. Lah. Um, how is this compared to corporate bonds? Um, is it compared between government and corporate bonds? Um, so in the structure or in, 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 in the bond market, right? Um, our government is definitely the strongest lah, when you compare against the corporate. So any issues by the Singapore government uh, 
definitely will have the lowest yield or lowest return as compared to your corporate bond. So the, the our, our our Singapore government is rated triple A. Yep. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. So I can let Sean answer uh, any questions if you want to. All right. All right. So uh, hi. Can you hear me right, Ethan? Yes, thank you. All right. So uh, I'm going to take over the share screen for a bit. Uh, give me one second. So as you all can see here, uh, this is our website, cft.cgs.cmb.com.sg. So for clients who are actually asking, uh, like, is there any additional uh, application form that is needed to open a CFT account? Uh, you just need to actually, if you're, so before you're able to open a CFT account, you need to be able to, you need to, uh, you need to have relevant education uh, required to open a, to trade CFTs. If not, you need to do a short uh, ABS SAS quiz. So uh, for clients who are interested to open, open an account, you can head over to CFT.c down here, this URL. And then click for online applications and then you're able to go through the whole application process and then if you are you do not have in a relevant you do not have the relevant uh, qualifications to actually start trading cfd not to worry you can go to our users user guide to learn more about how to do the abs ses cka quiz so down here we have a guide that we have we have prepared all right and next uh, we have another question um Hold on, huh? Is there any, any minimum trading amount for CFD? Okay, for CFD accounts, there's a minimum funding of 2,000 SING before you can trade. And then to find out more about charges, you hit to CFD, click commission and financing rates. From here, you're able to see that uh, the different uh, minimum commission charges for each exchange. All right. Okay, yes. Is there any more questions? All right. Um Slide. So there's another question. What is the biggest risk we should be aware of in trading in CFD trading? Okay, let's say um instances where let's say you have opened a position and then the company is suspended suspended. Um and we wouldn't know when the counter will be unsuspended, right? you're still required to hold a position and you're still required to pay financing. Okay, so that is one of the risks. Then there's also FX risk since we don't do any auto conversions. Um, and let's say you have different uh, foreign currencies in your account, you are exposed to Forex risk. Okay. So uh, down here, the screen that I'm sharing, this is a contact details. So for clients uh, who already have an account with us, right? Let's say you have an issue place, placing in an order. You can call our dealing hotline. We have a Singapore toll-free hotline. And for our Malaysia clients who are here, we have a Malaysia toll-free hotline as well. Okay. Um, so... Uh, Okay, so uh, I think Ethan has a question that he would like to answer. Over to you, Ethan. Okay. Um, I have one question here that's um, very good. So the question that um, it was posted is, what type of bonds are marginable under CFT? Um, okay, so I would like to answer this is that um, so far we have done... Um, a lot of our CFD bonds um, with uh, Sing dollar bonds as well as certain US dollar bonds. 
So we have an internal matrix um, or risk matrix to ascertain whether we can do CFD on this um, particular type of bond or credit um, because um, not every bond is able to be able to be marginal or to leverage law because of liquidity issues as well as if um, the bond is issued by a smaller company, um, we generally do not um, want to be able to give margin on this type of bonds. Um, so for example, examples, um, uh, bonds that we can do or we have done will be um, Olam bonds. Uh, we have done the recent Vertex bond. Um, Ames, Ames APEC REIT was a new bond that was done recently also. A uh, maple tree, a uh, capital land, um, is examples of this type of bonds that, that we can do on CAD. Um, okay, where to find this list on the website? Uh, for now, we do not post this on the website, um, but you can ask your trading representative for it and we're able to send it to him um, and he will forward this list to you. Okay, are uh, bond IPOs also available? Of course, of course, yes. So one of the um, um, one of uh, many ways to, to 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 invest into bonds is to subscribe to the new issues or the new IPOs because um, that is always being recycled and reissued on a daily basis from corporates and as well as government. So yes, um, you can indicate your your interest to us to subscribe to a new bond issue. Um, we have always done this for, for, for our clients um, in CJCIMB. Okay, um, how are we informed when available? Oh, this one, um, normally what happens is that, um, so the process works is such that um, if there is a new issue in uh, the day, normally it happens in the morning. Um, we are being notified by the book runner. So generally in the same market, right? Um, obviously the book runners or the underwriters is going to be the major banks, uh, DBS, OCBC, uh, probably UOB uh, sometimes. So what happens is that we'll receive a notification from them that um, Capital Land is coming out with a new bond today, uh, a 10 year, a 3% coupon bond. So we will disseminate this information to our trading representatives and they will forward to their clients in a day. So once this information is received by the clients, if they ascertain that they want to subscribe to this new issue, they just uh, call back to the trading rep or they email them or whatever communication method that you guys are comfortable with with your trading rep. And then we will indicate into the book runner. And then allocation will be known uh, the following day. So it's very, very simple and straightforward. So allocations will only be known the next day, the next day. So normally bond IPOs will only happen or book building will only happen within the day itself. It's unlike equities where sometimes um, book building uh, uh, can happen over a week via the ATM machines. So I, I think some of you have have, have um, experience or, or did this exercise before like, where you go to the ATM and then you um, try to subscribe for a new, new equity IPO. Um, so it can happen over a few days, but for bonds, it's only uh, within one day itself. Okay, um, there's another question. Um, that I see that for new traders with little experience, does it pose more risk to enter the market? Um, I assume, I, 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 I make an assumption here, like it is that he's asking about whether is it uh, risky to, to enter the fixed income market? Um, I, it depends on your risk appetite. So if you are a seasoned equity investor or, 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 or if you are a very um, savvy investor when it comes to, to um, equity trading and, and, and investment, right, then uh, for fixed income or for bond inv investments, there's, there's no issue. Um, because, because obviously the, the risk that you are taking is definitely lower. Um, yes, yeah, the returns may be lower, but your income stream will be more predictable.
Okay. So okay. So I see my questions. Um, I think for now that's it. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys have any more other questions. Uh, I it doesn't seem like there's any more other questions. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Okay. Um. So if. There are no more questions. Um, well, um, if any of you guys are interested in bond investment, feel free to contact your training representative. Um, they'll definitely be able to help you in this. Uh. Okay, and if for clients who have yet to actually have op to open a CFD account, CFD account, or is uh or or have are having issues with their their CFD accounts. Uh, feel free to contact me at six two one zero triple eight two, or you can call call this uh toll free hotline as well. And for clients who have an account and have yet to fund, uh, head over to our website, click getting started. And for Singapore clients, you are able to find our Singapore, uh, and you want to fund in Sing dollars, you are able to find find your funding details here. You are able to do pay now or fast transfer. And then uh for clients who are from Malaysia and you want to find it in different currency uh, in, in Ringgit, you can scroll down below and you can find the Ringgit funding details down below here. Okay. So uh, that's all. Seems like we don't have any more questions. Uh, so Kara, anything you'd like to share? Um, no. We can, uh, everyone, if you have the time, you can head to driven.cgscimb.com to uh, find out more about the Tesla campaign. Okay, uh, that's all on my end. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ethan. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a nice day.